Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a ride. ride. And today we're at the Minneapolis Convention Center and this is the Progressive International Motorcycle Show. And uh, you know, what are we gonna do today, Nate? Hey, today we are gonna take a look at a whole bunch of really cool motorcycles and some side-by-sides and it's some custom bikes and some builds. Ooh, I'm excited about yes. that. But hey, before we do, take a moment, hit that subscribe button below, and hit that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right, so what do you say, Nate? Um, let's, let's go, go look, look for a ride. ride. All right. Hey folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today we're at the, at the uh, Progressive uh, Motorcycle Show in Minneapolis, and today we're here with Mike. And Mike has a, a beautiful 2008 Harley Davidson Fat Boy, but what's most interesting is the story behind the bike. And so, Mike, thanks for talking with us today. Tell us a little bit about your bike and your story. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, I've been uh, lured by adventure all my life, and uh, I was a golf course superintendent working in Asia for 15 years and I got a job in Hanoi and met a guy who could import a Harley Davidson with no tax. That was enough for me so I decided I had a three year contract and wanted to ride on my days off. My contract crashed and between jobs my joy ride turned into a quest to ride across Vietnam in memory of our veterans who never came back. That That's incredible. So just, I mean you started out as, as working at a golf course. In Vietnam, of all places, and then through that, started riding the bike, and then decided to ride in honor of those who did not make it back uh, to the United States. That's just awesome. Uh, I, I eventually made that ride. There was a lot going on, and I had could not have foreseen what was going to happen. But uh, my uh, quest was delayed two years, and I ended up coming back to Vietnam, where my bike was still in storage, and uh, I made that ride from one end to the other, and when I got back, the bike had taken a beating and I walked with a limp. But what bothered me more was I felt I had missed something. I wasn't fulfilled. There was something more out there, but I didn't know what it was. I'm not a combat veteran, and I didn't know anybody who was in the war at that time from my generation, high school and whatnot. Okay, so hang on a minute. So you're doing this in, in memory and in honor of those soldiers that fell and never came back. But yet you never served, and you didn't have a, a, like a, none of your family members. So this was a completely sort of an out of the box for you. I mean, I, I, most times when I think of that, I think of somebody who was a veteran, or and but you've just come up as a normal citizen, and this, you had this uh, urge to, to do this. I mean, that's just really neat. Well, there's a little more to it than that. I, I, I served, I went in in 71 in the, into the Army, but I was served in Germany. My father was a World War II Navy veteran in the South Pacific, and something that I learned later on in my journey is the nature, our nature that is within us, within Americans. We have, and my story, it conveys an essence of that character, that of a free-spirited and patriotic nature. And uh, when I got back from my first ride and I was bothered about missing something, uh, I had to find out what it was, so I just stopped working and had faith. If I go back on the trails, I'll be led where I need to go. I'll find what I should. And riding with no commitments and responsibilities, I was absorbed by the journey, and my, I guess, our true nature came out. And I started living, well, I crossed the threshold out there, thinking about the task and turmoil of a combat veteran, and I crossed this threshold, and I felt a bond with the spirits of the fallen and I talked to them. And I started living vicariously for them. And I talked to the mountains like wise men who watched over us while I rode with a playful vengeance celebrating freedom tearing up the trails. <laughs> I, I didn't want it to be a hateful or somber affair. Right. Although there were overwhelming moments, quite a few. But I wanted to celebrate freedom that they didn't get to have. That, that's, it, that's incredible. It, 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 it was to be the solitude of jungle on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It was a powerful sensation. And to get off the trail and get on a path out in the jungle and be out there, just 
in, in the atmosphere that are missing in action are likely out here somewhere. Oh yeah. Around me. It, it was overwhelming. Wow. It, it was overwhelming. That, that, that had to be. That was, uh, um, I mean, to be out there, you know, because you're taking this bike off the roads. You, you're not traveling on the main. I mean, you have some main roads, but where you're going, it's dirt trails. And, and knowing Vietnam, there's a lot of rain. So you're right. I can, when you say you slipped and slide on this thing and fell over a number of times, I think you actually broke your arm at one point, didn't you? Uh, I fractured it, but I rode for four more days because I needed to lay tracks on some trails up around Anke where I know there were a lot of battles and again are missing in action. We're out there and I had to carry the spirit of freedom out there. Being, being an, an American on an obviously American motorcycle, traveling through Vietnam years after the war, what was the reaction from the villages and the people that you went through? They were uh, pretty surprised to see uh, an American coming up on this shiny big moto. They call their mopeds motos. So I'm on this big shiny moto, an American, and I'd be riding with my shirt off and uh, a nice tan. And I'd carried candy with me, so when I'd see children along the trail, I'd pull over and they'd eventually come over and they'd have candy and then uh, sometimes parents would come out or grandparents and we'd have a little party on the trail <laughs> and, and then I'd see them again in a couple of weeks or even a year later I'd stop back and I was just welcomed everywhere and people who remembered the wrath of American firepower treated me with kindness. Well, you know, that, that's an amazing testament to, you know, how, how people evolve over time and uh, that you were able to go back and, and be treated that way. I, it was, I felt uh, those I rode for would have appreciated it under my circumstances. You know, a beautiful country, friendly country, welcoming, they emulate the American way. Yeah. So, um, now, you've also written a book. I felt an obligation to make that ride and I felt an obligation to share the story. Millions of people ride across America each year to honor our fallen veterans. I had an opportunity that I'm sure every one of them would have loved to have had under my circumstances. And uh, I put everything aside and felt an obligation to share my story in a book. And it's crawled uh, Harley tracks across Vietnam to the wall. So speaking about the wall, um, that is, uh, <clears throat> sorry, that is a particularly moving monument. I've been there, and uh, what's going to happen with your bike eventually down the road when either you're not able to ride or you're gone? Well, uh, I've got uh, the painting on the front fender and on the rear fender. I've got a painting that uh, uh, signifies each year I ride across America from Minneapolis out to California to meet the National Veterans Awareness Ride. And we visit veterans in homes and hospitals every day for 10 days across America uh, on the way to Rolling Thunder Memorial Day weekend in Washington, D.C. And I'll just keep adding those years as long as I can. When I can no longer ride, uh, the bike will be titled to the National Park Service as a donation to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, also known as the Wall. Wow, that is impressive. So if people are uh, interested in finding your book, where can they find it? Please go to my website, uh, the w's.harleytracks.com. Uh, it's uh, quite a, an interesting website, and uh, the book is available there through PayPal. Very safe. Okay. All right. And also I'd like to say that uh, I share profits uh, with veterans and their families. Awesome. Mike, thank you so much for spending your time with your beautiful story uh, and, and your awesome Harley. Thank you so much on behalf of Two Guys Arrive for spending your time with us. Well, you're welcome, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you, and never forget.